Harley Davidson Lowrider S, a bike that was first introduced in 2020. Now this is a 2021 model and as far as I can tell the only difference between the two models is the paint scheme. This one is in a beautiful wet black colour and the other colour that they do for this year is what's known as a crimson red and on paper that looks absolutely stunning as well. So let's have a walk around the bike then and we will start with the front. So you've got an LED headlight with uh, DLR the indicators are just bog standard bulbs i'm afraid <laughs> but maybe that's not such a bad thing for the purists the forks are 43 millimeter fairly heavy duty uh and i think they're shower um from a riding point of view they uh they seem to do the job there's not a lot of fork dive in there which is quite good at the front you've got 300 millimeter meaty uh front rotors and Harley Davidson branded four pot calipers. I think, if memory serves, they're Brembo. If they're not, I'll um, put the, the difference on the screen, the, the proper name on the screen. It's a 19 inch front wheel, uh, Michelin uh, 11090B19 is what they class it as. Um, those brakes are fantastic, they do the job. Let's go a little bit further down the bike. Petrol tank, 18.9 litres, which Harley says is good for the mid 40s to the gallon. Uh, if memory serves, that equates to around about 170 miles out of a tank. It just depends on what your riding style's like, obviously. But then we'll go down to the engine. And there it is, the Milwaukee 8. Just there, 114 cubic inches in American money. And if you want to translate that into the UK, the pound sterling, that's 1868cc, eight valve, V-twin, putting out 114 uh, newton meters of torque and 94 brake horsepower, which is healthy by anybody's standards. But it, it's not um, unusable torque. It doesn't try and throw, it, throw you off the back of the bike. It just creates this sort of nice wave of power as and when's needed. Just down at the bottom, we've got a sight glass for your oil level, which is always a nice thing. Uh, Mid-mounted controls, which are an acquired taste, shall we say, but um, you kind of get used to it. The exhausts, as far as I know, they're called the shotgun style exhaust. I think they look absolutely stunning. You can just see underneath where the, um, where the exhaust is. I don't know whether that's coloring from uh, heat or whether that is the actual colour of the exhaust but nevertheless it kind of it marries nicely with the colour of the wheels quite like that when I first got on the bike I thought I was going to have a bit of a problem with um, heat on my leg but I have to say this uh, protective covering does quite a good job of shielding the heat from your legs seat height is very very low as you'd expect it's in the name isn't it 690 millimeter seat now I'm five foot eight 32 inch inside leg can easily flat foot and it's a heavy bike it's 305 kilos I think or it might even be 308 kilos uh, but because you can get your feet flat on the floor it doesn't offer any problems there we go to the back brake you've got a 292 or 296 millimeter single disc as opposed to twin discs at the front and you've got two pot calipers there um, they're more of a token gesture, or well, it's more of a token gesture, uh, is the back brake. Moving on to the back, you've got um, LED rear light and brake light, and again, just normal indicators. Uh, the, the, the one thing that, I, as much as though this bike is pretty, the one thing that I, I just don't think works is this. I don't know, it just doesn't seem, doesn't seem right for the bike. I think it might be nicer personal preference obviously if they did put some kind of mounting plate on the back it might have um, it might have enhanced the looks a little bit what do I know I'm not a designer it's uh, belt drive so no need for chain maintenance with oil or anything like that which is always a good sign the less maintenance we have to do on chains well final drives the better uh, no center stand partly because you don't need it and uh, partly I would imagine is because there's no room to put one in um, again, your 
mid mounted controls now this one when i jumped on it um i find that the gear change lever is slightly high but i've noticed that you can adjust it there's a, a nut and bolt there unscrew those turn it off move it up and down to suit um rubber mounted pegs as you can see <laughs> thankfully no scuffs but it is a brand new bike this it's only got about 200 miles on the clock so nobody's abused it as yet <laughs> we go um, up to the let's have a look at this seat actually this is obviously it's a solo bike there's no no pillion accommodation whatsoever but the seat is pretty accommodating for the rider uh, you've got a nice backrest that will support you just below your coccyx um, and it's pretty well padded if you just look at the depth of that so i would imagine that's good for you know riding as long as the petrol tank lasts as long as your fuel levels are enough you know what i mean um but it's a strange riding position let's go up to the front here you've got counterintuitively for any other bike that i've ever ridden you've got the the main sort of well the the only instrument binnacle which is sat on top of the petrol tank as opposed to up there behind the the cowl um it kind of works and it kind of is in keeping with the old school look uh but i yeah i think it, that's just a preference thing it, most people are so used to it being up you know up there behind the fairing that kind of is uh, slightly different than what you'd normally expect it's fairly readable that's that's the one good thing about it you don't have to look too far down you don't have to take your eyes off the road for too long to see probably the most important bit which is your speed um but you know to look at your revs well you know do you really do that that often i don't know um it's a fairly simple four inch gauge same with the uh, speedo same with the rev counter sorry uh, and on there you've got an lcd display as well which uh gives you Things like your miles per hour how far you've you've traveled what what range you've got left in your tank and a few other bits i'll put those on the screen switch gear is uh, sort of what i've kind of got used to now with the harleys it's fairly simple fairly straightforward although this is a very very basic bike on the on the full scale of things you've got uh, a button there which gives you the access to your lcd display information horn uh, daylight running lights um, main beam left indicator as opposed to on the right handlebar which is the right indicator self cancelling which is good um, kill switch starter and uh, hazard warning lights and oh the the other thing on the petrol tank it's uh, no no key uh, so you can't lock it um, and on the other side, that's just like a blanking plate. So it just marries it up, makes it look more balanced. There's nothing underneath there. Uh, the front forks, if you can see there, they are non-adjustable as opposed to the rear, which is adjustable for preload. Uh, not a massive amount of adjustment, but you wouldn't expect that anyway. And then you just have a little look at the levers, uh, brake lever and clutch lever, which are non-adjustable. But for my hands, which I'm guessing are just an average size, um, there's no need for adjustment it all seems fairly uh, fairly comfortable and um, quite a light clutch as well relatively speaking and the rest is kind of you take it in and uh, see what you think it's personally I think it's quite a pretty bike but then beauty is in the eye of the beholder and it's always subjective isn't it